Parental discretion is advised. Hey guys, welcome to Wrestling Mayhem Show 328. This is Sword right here in our Mayhem Studios in Pittsburgh, PA. Uh, with me is the man, the box, the sauce, DJ Lunchbox. How you doing? Very dark, very dark DJ Lunchbox. Yeah, it is very dark. I don't know what's going on there. I got a couple of bulbs burnt out. I am DJ Lunchbox. I am very happy to be uh, back on the Wrestling Mayhem show, uh, especially a Mayhem show such as this, because uh, this week we have an interview with Logan Judo! 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 That's right. But in the meantime, I'd like to have a frank discussion about the size of our penises and how much money we all make. Uh, uh, wheels? Yes, sir. Oh, let's uh, see. How, how large is your, uh, is your penis? Uh, on a good day, I have to say it's very adequate, and it scares small children. <laughs> on a good day. On a good day. On a bad day, and- it might scare an ant. Oh, that's fantastic. Wow. I didn't have a plan for this yeah, at all. Was... Uh, but yes, Hot Wheels is joining us. Who else is joining us? Sorgatron? It's Riz. Why, it's Sorgatron. What, why, it's no, me. It's Riz. Why, it's why, Riz. It's Riz. It's me. And by the way, with. There you wow. go. There you go. That's for, the, that's for the video right there. That's for the ladies. That's just for the video and the ladies, because the ladies watch the video. How you doing, Riz? I'm doing good. I'm on the show. Hopefully my internet doesn't go out like, again. Man, I'm here. I'm here. There you go. I'm always here. I'm glad you're so happy to be here. And also here in the studio on the couch is Chachi. Whoa, of InsertCoinToBegin.com. There <laughs> he is. Chachi's breaking thing. No, I, I I was absolutely sitting here the entire time. The entire time. The entire time. I heard everything that everyone ever said ever. InsertCoinToBegin.com. InsertCoinToBegin.com. As Chachi says, and soon to be a person with a Kickstarter. Hey, hey, hey yes. Chachi. Chachi, what speaking up? of inserting things... How big is your penis? How big is my penis? Yes. Yes, you clearly didn't hear everything that everyone yeah. said. <laughs> <laughs> That's the question of the hour. It's frank discussion about your penis time. How uh, big is it? You and, know, And uh, how many veins can you see on a good day? Uh, you know the expression, <laughs> hung like a horse? Yes. Uh, I would have to say hung like a dinosaur. Wow. And it's nothing but veins on a good day. Wow. <laughs> Is like it a, a fungus horse? No, no. I mean, like, a pissed off T Rex that's pissed off because it can't masturbate because. He's got tiny arms! <laughs> hey, T Rex, tell the people where they can find out about us. <laughs> you can go to WrestlingMayhemShow.com. We are on the Facebooks. We are on the Google Plus. We are on the Twitters at Mayhem Show. Talk to us. We talk back. You can send us emails too. Good, good times. times. You can buy our app. Uh, wait, 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 good times. Perfect. Oh, at wrestlingmayhemshow.com. I forgot I had to finish that part. I normally don't. You can do also this. call us. You can call us at four one two two zero six WMS zero. You can uh, email us. We covered that. Call us. <laughs> tweet us. You can uh, buy our app and get the exclusive gold content that you don't get to hear everywhere else. That normally contains the discussions like the penis one that we are having right now. Right now. Yes. yes. Buy the app. Buy you, you, buy can, you can is. get the app it's on the scary. iTunes store or in the Amazon uh, Plus store. Are we on no, Amazon, Amazon App Store? App Store. Yes. Uh, we are not in Google Play. I don't I know why. No, no, we're not there. We used to be. Yeah, we used to be. Uh, we're hidden now. But uh, yeah, if you name it, you can reach us there. Except for Google, probably. Play. Yeah, except yeah. for Google Play. Well, you got the Amazon like, store. We are right. we are all over the BlackBerry store. Let me tell you what. We are. We are gonna be the biggest thing to ever hit BB ten. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Destroy the competition. You are tuned in to the motherfucking wrestling mayhem show. Exactly. And what do we like yes. to do here on the mayhem show, Chachi? On the mayhem show, we care. An- 
listen uh, to what our fans have to say. Exactly. Oh, and we do got an email sure. here this week. Uh, this one comes from, I don't know, because I deleted that part of the email. Oh, no! Antonio oh, G drops us an email, and which is entitled Mail for Mayhem Show. Don't screw up, Russell fan. Well, he's oh, not going he's to. He's not here. Because he's not even oh, here this no. week. Is he, is he telling he Russell is. fan to not screw up, or is he instructing us to not screw up Russell fan? Hmm. No, he's that's too. It's too late on both counts. He's telling. Yeah, yeah. He's telling Russell fan to not screw up. I believe this is the guy that emails all the time, making fun of. Russell fan. Perfect, but who doesn't? Okay, he says, hey, Mayhemers, this is Ciro. It's Ciro. Oh, it's Ciro. Oh, all right. Hi, Ciro. Hi. 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 Hi, buddy. I won't, I won't be able to make uh, the show by the time of the Indie Minute, so I'm forced to email Fan this. of the week! There you go! Don't fuck up, Russell fan. I can already anticipate that for the Indie Minute, you'll be talking about your in- Indie promotions, Riverside, ACW, etc. Uh, like you always do. Stop! Bigger shit went down this week and is worth mentioning. Pow! Such as the Kenny King ROH situation. Pow! Signing of Sarah Del Rey and Pac and potential Pow! signings of Gargano and Jigsaw. Pow! The debut, uh, the debut card of Shine. Pow! And NCW Femme Fatale's news. Pow! Pow! If by the time the any minute you, by the time of the any minute, uh, you end up having this, that stuff in there. I'll know you listen to me and will feel grateful. Otherwise, hell and brimstone will come to you in the form of the chat room comment. Pow, 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 pow. All the way from Chuko Town. This is Are Ciro. You pow? Ciro, yes, this is pow. Ciro saying. Pow. See you all later. Pow. Um, pow. Well, actually, I was going to do the pow. indie minute, and uh, with the help of the Russell Russell fan, I can I can cross promote you here. Uh, we did have in here the ROH Kenny King situation as well as i put in the shine news and i don't know about any of the rest of the stuff that's no. because you sir are on the motherfucking ball I, yeah because yes. you're the man okay because this is the motherfucking mayhem show it is it is it, 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 it would really be. we talk about I wrestling it would be. we do talk about wrestling here uh so let's get right into the indie minute Pow! Gonna be a lot of pals on this one. Uh, first of all, I want to bring up our friends uh, Bobby F J Town would kick my ass if I didn't bring this one up. Uh, Phoenix Pro Wrestling is having another show here uh, at the Masonic, Ta- Masonic Ta- Temple <laughs> in Johnstown, PA. Uh, when is that? Where's the already bank? flooded? Where is? Is already flooded? I believe that's this Friday. <laughs> this Friday. Is this what is that what this is showing me? Stupid Facebook events. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, they're having a show. I believe they're PhoenixProWrestling.com. I was finding the other day. Or just just look up Phoenix Pro Wrestling uh, and they will come up and look for the one in Johnstown PA emanating from there. So Kenny King is no longer in ROH, if you haven't figured that out by the pay-per-view this weekend. And I know I know Riz, you weren't terribly happy about us going on about this situation. Uh, yeah. Mm. yeah. <laughs> well, it wasn't that it was handled properly. It was that they're they're angry because it wasn't handled prop properly on their end. Yeah, and they said there was a there's a definitely a he said he said she said thing. He said he said thing. I yeah, there's no ladies involved. I don't think uh, between the two. ROH released a statement first off uh, after Kenny King appeared on uh, Impact. Uh, last Thursday, and of course, uh, appeared once again in the freaking Destination X match for the title at the pay-per-view on Sunday. Um, but they basically issued a statement saying that uh, there was an agreement, whether it be handshake or verbal, I guess, uh, that uh, he wasn't signing but would sign and had an exploratory period uh, as long as he didn't show up on any other program, which he did. And he came back saying that's kind of a BS argument. Um, and, and there's been there was a shoot interview uh, preview that came up from uh, early May, I think, uh, that I think WrestleFan posted on the Mayhem Show open group uh, on Facebook. Uh, that said, he's obviously not been been very vocal and not been happy with uh, Ring of Honor in general uh, about how they're promoting things, I guess, and where they're going. Um, I know I had a discussion with somebody that says, well, if you work for a company and they just they just cut, uh, I think like three of the four shows for I think next month, this month, something like that you know, you wouldn't be too happy either as opposed to getting a shot at you know, a freaking pay-per-view with TNA. So uh, whatever you think about TNA, that's definitely higher than what ROH is doing right now you know, as well as you may or may not think ROH is doing. 
Um, but I don't know. What do you guys think of this? You think he was in the wrong? I mean, I think it was a tremendous upgrade for him. If, if fuck Ring of Honor. <laughs> if Ring no, wow. no, I agree with him. If Ring of Honor, yeah. Ring of Honor wasn't smart enough to get a signature on a contract, yeah. Fuck. What them. kind of business is this? Yeah. Um, yeah, exactly. It's not even that. It's the pe- it's the part where in the contract it stated that he was able to negotiate with other companies. So with that, it, why get mad when someone wants to negotiate with him? And, yeah, and exactly. he accepts the negotiation. Well, and I think the, the he, he thing negotiated is, perfectly. He negotiated. <laughs> oh, TNA wants me. All Apparently, right. they yeah. went well. I, actually, I think what the contract stated said was that he could negotiate, but not appear until both sides were done. Now, to be fair, he does have one half of the TNA tag belts. Yep. TNA so, or ROH. I'm sorry, ROH uh, tag belts right. with, uh, with the Red Titus, of course, All Night Express. Which is probably the reason so, why they said he couldn't appear until everything was settled. Exactly, exactly. Because they would have you know, ideally <laughs> dropped him, uh, dro- have him drop the belt at some show, even if it was a live show, whatever, uh, so he can move on. Now they have to have a tournament. They, they did announce they're going to do a tournament that at least they're doing the right thing there. Most of the tournament, will, first round, will be on TV. And then they're going to announce where the uh, semifinal finals will be, probably on IP per view eventually or something. Um, so, when have we said TNA was ever in the right on this show? We haven't, but they are this but time. But they are now. They, yeah. they did the right thing. I, you know, they, they gave them opportunity, and uh, you know, Lions were right. Yeah, I mean, it's a, it's a, yeah, they, it, it's a it's exposure on a nationally televised thing versus the when the hell is it on in my market? If it's in my market for Ring of Honor, um, yeah. I mean. And the LP, you know, you you used to be the uh, ROH standby guy. I absolutely loved Ring of Honor, and now why do I say fuck T- or fuck Ring of Honor? Uh, fuck Ring of Honor for the same reason that I often say fuck TNA because they have great talent, great assets, and they've mismanaged the shit out of it. Yeah, they have nobody to blame but themselves. Really, really, because that HD Net show was boring, boring. Even yeah, for somebody it, that loves wrestling, it was boring. Yeah. You're like, Fuck Ring of Honor. They <laughs> fucked it up, so this is their bed, and now they have to lie in it. Exactly. Or not. Or fucking sell the bed, and <laughs> then there's no more Ring of Honor. Well, it's somebody else's bed now, technically, so, you know. So, no, that's... Be Panda Energy's bed before too long. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. As a well-accompanied bed. Uh, then there's something. Here's something that I know absolutely nothing about because this is a wrestle wrestle fan thing. Circus Maxis 2012 full card uh, happening with St. Louis Anarchy. Who knows? Yes. Uh, Davy Richards is going to be on card against T.J. Perkins. That's a pretty big match. ACH versus Dingo. <laughs> Dingo. <laughs> Dingo. Dingo. Fans- Maybe the Dingo ate your baby. Uh, fans bring the weapon match. Check it out Tuesday, May 15th. It's a Tuesday at 11 p.m.? This isn't right. What? <laughs> I think they're using event. No, this is a post. Okay. No, it's July 13th. Friday, July 13th. That's this week. Nights at Columbus Hall in Alton, Illinois. So if you're in that area, go check that out. Or if they're doing DVDs. Not terribly familiar with St. Louis Pro. Uh, this weekend, hey, there's an RWA show. Uh, yes, and is. we talked about a little bit before how the, you guys are doing a charity uh, drive there. Uh, you want to mention, uh, recap us real quick on that, Wheels? What's going on with that? Oh, sure, yeah. Uh, recap, basically... Uh... <laughs> Poor family lost their home in a fire, of course, and uh, there's a grandmother and a grandson. Grandson loves wrestling, so we figured we get in contact with them, give them free tickets, come check out the show. We also asked the fans to bring in items that they would uh, normally want to maybe help out a family, like kids clothes uh household items mm-hmm. even food it anything to help that family get back on their feet because as we know it's not easy getting back on your feet with a fire or a flood or anything so just with rwa being a family we out we did the outreach to them and we opened our arms too Excellent, excellent. Go check out more information there, rwalive.com. I haven't seen much. Uh, is there any uh, announcement events or anything for that? That's, uh, of course, Resurrection is the show. Yes. Uh, main event, of course, will be 
the newly crowned champion of Jimmy Nuts versus the notorious Shane Taylor. Uh, also, there will be the return of Lodi. Mm-hmm. And actually, uh, yeah, I wasn't there for his first appearance, but uh, it seemed like a really good addition for RWA down there. He, yes, and uh, looks, it looks good he, for he not. He seemed to have a lot of fun there. <laughs> yeah, he did. He did. It, it really did seem like it on on on, on video at least. So go check that out, rwalive.com for more information. Uh, they've, they've been really fun shows lately, and uh, go check them out if you're down there in the West Newton area. And of course, DVDs on sorgatronmedia.com. And videos at uh, youtube.com slash rwapro if you want to check out what they're all about. And, uh, you know, see if they're worth getting into for you. Pow! Pow! Buy the, buy the DVDs! Yeah, you can do that, too. Oh, well, Gunner Chachi has going to say, buy DVDs! <laughs> there you go, there you go. Uh, Shine Wrestling Card. Yeah, I did earmark this, because... Uh, uh, this is something that's been cropping up for a little uh, a little while now. Uh, Friday, J- July twentieth is going to be that show. Um, it's a new new promotion. They announced the main event of Sarah Del Rey versus Jazz. Uh, they've also announced Nikki Rocks, who used to be uh, oh jeez, what was her name? Uh, Roxy LeBeau. Roxy Rocky LeBeau. Thank, thank Roxy. you. Roxy. 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 Roxy taking LeBeau. on uh, Rain Vita Scott versus Kimberly. Um, and Rebby Sky is on this, and uh, this, this has been a little, like Daphne's been on the poster for this. Uh, nothing announced with her yet. Um, Tax snatch. What? Yes, yes, <laughs> yes. As we affectionately oh, call her about on this show. Snatch. Exactly, exactly. So go How check that out. How can you forget out. about Tax Snatch? Friday, July. I don't know, man, but I used to watch porn during the Mayhem show. I don't know what happened. Hmm. <laughs> you can go. Ow! You can go catch the IPIP review at <laughs> wwnlive.com. So go check that out. And finally, uh, uh, yeah, like we mentioned, there's there's uh, also uh, uh, oh, this was a note apparently added by the Wrestle fan this Friday in Watertown, New York, uh, for two CW. Uh, Rachel and Summer, Rachel Summerlin, friend of the show, will take on Mickey James, favorite of the show. So mm-hmm. there you go. I love Mickey James. Well, well, second favorite. I like AJ. Pow! Mm. Now it's time for our interview. We're up with uh, we're on the line here with Logan Shulo, the IWC Heavyweight Champion, joining us on the phone. How you doing, man? Hey, I'm doing great. How is everything? E- excellent, excellent. Going great here, sir. So uh, right off the bat, is like uh, so with I- IWC. You're trained with IWC. You've gone the full length, and now you're the IWC champion. You've been for uh, several months since March now. How does it feel? Yeah, uh, it's really crazy, actually. The company I always wanted to work for when I was training, um, I got like offers to work at smaller companies. I always wanted to wait because I wanted to be a part of IWC. And so now to have gone through all the training uh, and then kind of worked my way up, and now I'm at the top of the IWC, it feels great, man. Uh, I love being in that spot. And I love having that kind of ride on my shoulders, also. Awesome, awesome. Now, I think we, you know, we, I think we, when we were talking about Matt just a couple of weeks ago, we kind of had a similar story about like discovering, like, you know, IWC as a fan and everything. Uh, how did you yeah. come across it? Uh, it you, so you're a fan first before you ended up going to the school, right? Yeah, oh, yeah, absolutely. Um, when I was in high school, actually, right when I graduated high school, I wanted to move to Texas. I wanted to train at Shawn Michaels School. And uh, that didn't happen. Shawn Michaels School was shutting down at the time, so that wasn't happening. Um, I wanted to go to the Samoa School, but that was also far away. My dad wanted me to go to college, so I did that. And then he said, after you get a degree, you could, uh, you could be a wrestler. You go anywhere you want. About a year into college, uh, IWC had that show with Matt Hardy on it. It was Matt Hardy against AJ Styles. Mm-hmm. And um, I didn't know anything about independent wrestling. I barely knew any companies like outside of WWE, WCW, the main three companies, basically. And um, so I went to that show. I saw it. I saw how great all the wrestlers were. I remember specifically Delirious standing out to me as being like super entertaining. Um, after the show, I went up to one of the wrestlers. I asked them how you got involved in it. They introduced me to Shirley Doe, who was the head trainer at the time. And basically, the rest is history. They started uh, started training a few weeks after that. Mm-hmm. And I always remember, because we, we started uh, probably, I think, a year after that even, uh, coming to the shows, uh, uh, me and Chachi and the guys here on the Mayhem show. And I remember yeah. you were always one of the guys. Like I, I saw you, know, you and Facade were always the guys in the back. 
Uh, and it was great to see you guys start popping up on the shows. You know, IWC is really great, it seems, for that. Uh, you know, you, the trainees end up becoming the top performers eventually if you guys work long and hard enough. Yeah, man. I uh, That's really cool of you to say that, too. And, you know, much credit to Facade. I, you know, he's right up there, too. I know he just recently lost the Super Indy title, but I'm sure it'll have that back real soon. Um, but it's nice, man. He broke in a good little bit before me, but, you know, I kind of feel like we're on the same same path to the top in the IWC. So it's nice for us to be getting that time right now. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, and uh, let's talk a little bit about uh, your history with IWC. Now, you you, you broke in, uh, you were, uh, uh, after a while after you debuted, uh, you started bringing a mic stand to the ring. I remember because you hit, almost hit my camera a couple times. Uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we had a couple I close remember. goals there. Uh-huh. So uh, tell me tell me about like how the fruition from that, and now uh, you, you kind of have this uh, heavy metal Jesus uh, uh, persona going on now. Uh, tell me about the evolution there. Yeah, well, you know, right when I started as Logan Shulo, I was just kind of uh, Logan Shulo. I didn't really have any character to me, any real, you know, whatever the term is, gimmick or story to me. I was just me out there being a good guy, I guess. And uh, so after a little while, I kind of wanted to have an edge to me. I wanted to change it up. Really wanted to have a character to myself. So, uh, you know, I play instruments, I sing in a band, play in a band and stuff. I thought that would be a cool thing to incorporate into my character, right? Um, so I started doing my interviews with a mic stand. I started bringing it out to the ring. After a little while, I believe Chuck Roberts kind of got sick of the mic stand. Um, wasn't really having me do anything with it. Allowed, wasn't allowed to use it in any of my matches, stuff like that. So I basically just ditched that, and I kept up with the character. Did you write your so own? Not- oh, go ahead. What's that? Go ahead, man. Yeah. No, so kind of how I got to this point is another thing that would always happen almost all the time. Um, I would be walking down the aisle, whatever it is, coming out to the ring or just mid match. People would be yelling Jesus at me because I looked like Jesus for whatever reason. Um, and one day I was training with Facade, um, and he just called me Heavy Metal Hazers. He just randomly said it for no real reason. I don't know why. And. As soon as he said it, I was like, you know what? That's pretty cool. You know, I'm thinking I'm going to stick with that. And uh, so I started calling myself Heavy Metal Jesus, and it seemed to make sense with people and kind of caught on. And now I am Heavy Metal Jesus. Yeah. Excellent. Excellent. Um, and it really seemed like, uh, it, 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 you know, really in hindsight, uh, you know, your, sh- your shot to get the belt here this year uh, kind of makes sense because I know, you know, us watching it here at ringside. Uh, you know, you had a series of excellent matches, of course, up in Clearfield with Michael Facade. Um, yeah. And it really felt like your coming out party was that uh, winner-takes-all match, the four-way ladder match with Facade when he won the Super Indy belt. And uh, M-Dog yeah. and uh, how I keep getting mixed up. Not Hallow Wicked, the other one, right? <laughs> Wait, say that one more time. Uh, it was a Hallow Wicked that was in that Frightmare. match as well. Frightmare. Oh, yeah, yeah. Hallow Wicked. Oh, okay, Hallow okay. Wicked. I, always get, I always get those two confused. Um, mm-hmm. But... Uh, but can you talk a little bit about, uh, well, of course, last year, it, it seems like you uh, really kind of came out of your shell a bit. Yeah, you know what? Um, that match did mean a lot. Anytime I get a chance to wrestle in front of the crowd, it means a lot to me. But um, that match specifically, that winner-takes-all uh, ladder match, was it was high pressure, and it really meant a lot to me because we were main event. It was a special match. Um, I don't think too many people were expecting a lot out of me, but I always expect a lot out of myself. So uh, to have that opportunity to go out there in the main event, and even though I didn't win, I got to make an impression on mm-hmm. people, whatever it was, even if it was that lasting image of me just falling through the ladder, uh, for whatever reason, uh, like you said, maybe that was my you know moment right there that kind of turned the corner for me. Definitely, definitely. Uh, we have a question from the chat room. Hot Wheels, of course, uh, for the show, old time uh, IWC fan himself. Uh, he's asking, sure. uh, what are your thoughts on Shima winning the X Division title this past weekend, of course, Sunday at uh, Destination X? And uh, also, what are your thoughts on uh, indie wrestlers' uh, pushes in, in both companies? I'm presuming uh, WWE and uh, TNA. Yeah, well, you're going to have to reword that second question for me in a second. I okay, no problem. Understand. But uh, as far as Shima winning the X Division title, 
I watched that whole pay-per-view, and I couldn't be happier, man. Uh, anybody that knows Shima, and he is like, he's a good friend of mine. That guy works so hard. He loves wrestling. He loves to go out there and put on great matches. And to see him just come from where he came from, IWC, work his way all the way to the top, move on to TNA, and now he's working his way to the top there. That's a great thing, man. I'm, uh, I'm proud of my friend. Yeah. That's awesome. That's awesome. And not just Tim, but the other one, uh, 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 Flip Kendrick, of course, has Flip Casanova on there. I know has been yeah. around the IWC as well. I know uh, Jonah Brassi was talking. That's the first uh, uh, Prime Wrestling, PWO Wrestling uh, alumni uh, uh, match that's been on pay-per-view, so, which was really cool man, to see. That was cool. Hey, Flip's a great guy, too, man. Mm-hmm. And, uh, you know, I hope he can stick around and maybe they use him more in TNA. Uh, I really like the match he had with uh, Shima, Zima Island, whatever. Uh, I really like the match he had on the pay per view too. He's yeah. always going to be Shima to us, isn't he? Yeah, I know, right? I can't call him anything. After else. After all these years, and then everybody's going to know him as Zima when he gets bigger in the next three years or so, and we're going to be the weird uh, ones. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. Uh, the second part he was asking was, uh, "What are your thoughts on indie wrestlers getting pushes in both like TNA and WWE?" I think you know, mostly we're seeing like Daniel Bryan, uh, yeah. you know, and of course, you know, everything with Shima, Flip Kendrick, uh, in TNA. Uh, well, you know, I might be a little biased because I'm also an indie wrestler, but I think it's great, man. Um, you know, the guys that are on the indies that are out there practicing their craft every week, every month, whatever the opportunity is, they're training, they're doing the promos, trying to get better. To me, the reason those guys get pushed and the reason the crowd accepts them is because those are the guys that are so passionate about wrestling. They're the same guys that you can relate to them because they loved wrestling just the way you did the, their whole lives. And then they just decided to take it the extra step and try and become a wrestler. And then they worked their way to the top. And, you know, it's such a struggle to get there. And then, you know, it's, it's a great thing to see. And, uh, you know, unlike sometimes, you know, they might just take a random bodybuilder or athlete and push them. It doesn't work quite the same. You'll notice mm-hmm. it doesn't. It doesn't click with the audience the same as it does when, when there's a guy that's put in his time and, and really loves wrestling and it shows through, you know? And, and then talking about guys like that, you know, guys that have made a splash like CM Punk, like Cole Cabana, uh, you know, uh, the belt you're holding now has a lineage with those same names on it. Was it like, the, you, know, you know, being kind of along that same path and seeing those guys that have the same belt doing what they're doing in WWE, say? I mean, that's great, man. I'm a huge CM Punk fan, Cabana. I know um, SJK, Corey Graves is down in FCW right now, and Mm -hmm. I'm sure he'll be on TV soon. So to even be able to have the chance to follow the kind of success route that these guys have had, it's a great opportunity. And, you know, anytime I hold that belt, I know that, you know, CM Punk had this in his hands at one point. SJK, Cool Cabana, anybody, Sandman, a bunch of guys had this title and uh, it does mean a lot to me excellent excellent um of course coming up here is proving grounds on july 28th uh new new venue something a little different they're, they're going with the young guys uh, a couple matches announced including you taking on chess flexor it was a uh, <laughs> kind of a surprise number one contender there yeah yeah what surprise you... to me too say <laughs> so other than a surprise any other shots on your opponent there yeah, chess flexor has had a shot in the past, and I remember, I remember us, particularly on this show, really getting behind him and having that chance. Um, you you say you're behind him having this chance? Uh, we were the first time around. Oh, okay, okay. <laughs> you know what? I mean, hey, Flexo does his thing, and he is who he is, so I can't blame him for that. Um, you know, I didn't even, I didn't get a chance to see the number one contender match or how it went down. I heard it was like real wacky. And uh, he was knocked out or something, but he still won the match for whatever reason. Um, all I know is that if the title is on the line at Proving Ground, I will uh, not hesitate to unleash everything I got on Flexer. Are you intimidated by the giant dragon that comes to the ring with him? Oh, God, I don't know if intimidation is the word. <laughs> uh, I. I actually enjoy seeing that, man. That makes me laugh. I see that huge dragon come down, him riding the back of <laughs> who's ever walking underneath that. That's funny to me. The guys that emerge from under there get a little scary, but other than that, uh, a little yeah, little too right. weird for me. 
Um, I can't help it. <laughs> sorry, was that Chuck? I, I bust up laughing at ringside every time they come out. <laughs> every yeah. time I, I, I'm, I'm sitting there with the camera, trying not to shake it or anything, and I just, I right. just lose it laughing. I also have to ask as a backup question: that are you also intimidated by uh, uh, Chess Flexor's impeccable fashion sense in his ring gear? Uh, yeah, I can only <laughs> imagine what he's going to wear next. Um, the the one moment that stands out to me, he had like a big, white, fluffy feather outfit this one time, and I just thought, all right, if he's going to wear this, you just never know what this guy's going to come out wearing. <laughs> <laughs> I think I remember him wearing a tutu one time to the ring. Yeah, yeah, I can picture that too. <laughs> awesome, <laughs> awesome. Um, well, it's uh, well. Hey, Chachi, you had a question for him. We want to. We, we like to get in deep with the with the uh, interviews. So, uh, Chachi, um, the friend of the show has a, a friend of the show. AJ has a standing question uh, that we ask to all of the interviews that we conduct on the show, and it takes okay. them. It catches them a little off guard, and they're okay. not. They're not really prepared to answer it. Uh, but it. <laughs> It's an interesting question, nonetheless. All right, I'm I'm excited. All right, let's do okay. <laughs> now, if you could be a vegetable, yeah, what vegetable would you be, and why? Wow. Okay. <laughs> Let me think about this one. Jeez, what is the right answer to that? Well, what did what did uh, Rachel say? Carrot. Yeah, I think she was a carrot. Yeah, Rachel Summerlin said. I can't carrot. remember why. I yeah, I don't. Well, it wouldn't be a carrot. We uh, we had a discussion at uh, at the gym earlier today about guys and carrots. And they just don't mix well, so uh, it's not gonna, not going to be a carrot. I'm trying to think of what is like a cool vegetable, man. I have no idea yet. Um, I'm totally blanking here. I can't even think of vegetables. Um, Jeez, dude. <laughs> Count, count me up as a sweet potato, okay? That's the most <laughs> common thing I eat. There you go. There you go. See, I, I tried to warn you. It catches people off yeah. guard. And, uh, and I the- was not prepared for that one. Awesome. Uh, Riz, uh, I want to give you a shot here. Uh, do you have any sure. questions? I know you are a longtime IWC follower, I think longer than either of us. I do have a question. A uh, few questions, actually. Uh, first of all, what are your thoughts on... Sammy Callahan winning the t- Super Any title. Man, uh, Sammy Callahan's have just been killing it everywhere he goes, man. The guy's like winning tournaments. He's all over the world. So for him to come into IWC, I think it adds another level of credibility to that title. Um, you know, the Super Any title is always held by like great athletes. Uh, it's a title I'd love to win someday. If I can hold my title to December, I think I'll actually have a chance at that. Um, so, yeah, Sammy Callahan, man. He's a great wrestler, super entertaining, uh, great in the ring. Good for him. That was actually my next question, too. Since you had since you had the chance to be the World Heavyweight Champion, you had to drop the super indie bid. Um, but do you yeah. feel that you have a case to challenge for Sammy, step challenge Sammy Callahan for the, for the uh, super indie title in the near future? Yeah, man, I uh, I don't know if you got the chance to see that one, uh, the one promo that came out, but I, I was actually legitimately pretty pissed off when I had to drop out of the Super Indie Tournament. I I look forward to that show every single year. I want to be a part of it. I want my chance to shine in that tournament. And uh, so I was really upset about that. And Chuck Roberts kind of threw it out there. He said, if I could hold the title to December at Winner Takes Stall, um you know, I would have a chance to wrestle against whoever it is at the time for the Super Indie title. So, you know, I absolutely think I do have a good bid for that. And uh, whether it's Sammy Callahan, Michael Facade, or somebody else, I think that could be really cool. Uh, really cool story there. Oh, I'd like to see you wrestle either of them, honestly. Mm-hmm. I, I think hey, either, of like those, either of those matches would be outstanding. Yeah. Appreciate it, man. Yeah, I would love to wrestle you with those guys. Awesome. Anything else, Riz? That's it. All right. Uh, LB, I know you've been yes. stewing on something for a while here. I've been I've been stewing on this question. Uh, uh, Mr. Shilo, here on the Wrestling Mayhem Show, every now and then we like to 
ask something known as the big question or the final question or the big problem or something that we haven't really come up with a name for yet. Um, My question to you, uh, as we've stated in this interview, you're a professional wrestler and you're also (laughs) – a uh, uh, you're you're a man of many talents. You're also a musician, singer, songwriter. You're in a band, so on and so forth. Right. Our big question to you: mm-hmm. If you had two opportunities, one being or uh, getting a uh, a contract to the WWE with mm-hmm. a guaranteed push, or two, yeah, getting a record contract. Also, with a guaranteed push, which one would you pick? WWE contract with a push. Um, Not even a question about it, man. I love playing music. I love all that. But more than anything, you know, I love wrestling. I wanted to be a part of WWE since I was a little kid. That's where I want to be. That's where I want to go. So whatever I got to do to get there, too, no question about it, the wrestling route. Excellent. Excellent. Yeah, Zord? that was cool. Good right. question. Awesome. Logan Shulo, check him out. Oh, there's Chachi. Hey. Uh, check him out. IWCWrestling.com <laughs> to find out what's going there on there. Proving Ground, the Young Talent Initiative is July 28th in uh, White, Oak, White Oak, Pennsylvania. Uh, again, find your info and ticket info over there at IWCWrestling.com. Tickets start at only $10, $7 for kids. Um, anything else yeah. you want to pl- – oh, well, go ahead. No, no, I, you got it all all summed up there, man. I think Proving Ground is going to be a great show. It'll be a chance for some people to see new faces that haven't uh, haven't even made it onto an IWC show yet. Awesome. And, um, you know, come out there. You can see me beat up chest flex or two if you're interested <laughs> in that. And um, other than that, if you guys ever want to contact me or whatever, hit me up on Twitter, too. Awesome. Thanks, Logan Shulo, IWC champion. Uh, we've been calling his, his name for years in the audience, and uh, it's great to see uh, uh, he's going, going places in IWC and beyond here soon. Uh, so thanks a lot. Oh, hey, uh, plugs real quick. You're on Twitter. Yeah, it's at Logan Shulo, L-O-G-A-N-S-H-U-L-O. Whatever. Whatever you got for me, feel free. If you, if you come up with a question in 10 minutes, just uh, shoot it there, and I'll answer there. There you go. There you go. If you want to know what other uh, uh, mineral, mineral or vegetable he may be, <laughs> go do that. <laughs> Thanks a lot, man, for the grounds. And uh, we'll be right back, guys. Uh, here's a little bit from uh, what's going on in Ohio with Prime Wrestling. And, of course, what's going to be happening on the Gold app that you get over there at your uh, – Android and uh, iOS devices. We'll be right back with Remember One. Are you a bitch, Sword? No, I just haven't updated my <laughs> food you, are shapes you a yet. F- <laughs> I haven't. I haven't. I'm. I haven't updated my food it's shapes. Like weird. Are you a food pyramid? That added from Shenyang, China, and now somebody just uh, got to it from Beijing, China. Is there any pie left? Yeah. Yeah, there should be. I like pie. <laughs> And I realized because I was like, what the fuck is. Oh. It could have been Missy. I don't think she's ever watched Arrested Development. <laughs> Missy, watch Arrested you're Development! Hey guys, welcome back to the Wrestling Mayhem Show, and we would like to take it into a little segment we like to call, Remember When? We're starting into part two. Are we doing gold? Uh, we just did gold. That was gold. Wait, <laughs> You you think we're still doing the show at that point? Or I'm talking about China? There's no clips of anyone eating things. That was bad. What? What? I'm going to go get some pie. Go get some pie. Hurry up. We'll figure out what Remember One's going to be. Fuck this show. I'm getting pie. Uh, Let's do one about Shima being Batista. Hey, remember that time that Shima was Batista? I should bring that up. (laughs) Ah. 
we can be team, like the hipster team catfish. Before they were team baby catfish. Fire. Nice. <laughs> we fucking we like Zima Zima Ion before he was cool. We knew Zima yeah. Ion before he was fucking hairspray gimmick. <laughs> was it rich? It, actually that was that was like that was a long time ago. Fucking TNA. <laughs> fucking blowing up rats, bro. <laughs> what? <sighs> Oh, I saved that bitch. Wow, he has... <laughs> dude, he has, like, no hair in this one. I'm so glad he, like, grew that, like, afro thing back. Because <laughs> it's... It works oh, so much better Oh, got the, the smiley stuff. face. Munch bots. <laughs> <laughs> I don't understand what's going on. There's just a bunch of people standing around. <laughs> by my washing machine. Okay, this is where they presented a t-shirt to Mayhem Missy for some reason. <laughs> so that was a start. <laughs> that was a start. <laughs> Remember when Missy got a t-shirt from, uh, uh, Mayhem Missy got t-shirt from people? <laughs> Why do people keep bringing their shirts? Why were people so interested in keeping her clothed? I don't know. Oh, wait, yeah, here he comes. Yeah, this is it. I think I found the Batista music. Here, here's the video. I should update in a second. That's the shimmer. Yeah, I should update in a second. Alright. Wow, this, this place used to be so wide open. <laughs> Fuck this game. That's what she said. That's what she said. That's what her... Duh. But That's what said. Stephanie said. <laughs> All right. Well, who's doing it? Uh, Riz. I'm just queuing it up. Hey, sword. Okay. All right. Yeah. Okay, Riz. Got a piece of paper and a pen. Are you kidding me? No, I'm just kidding. Just remember size eight, nine for kids and shirts and pants. Size eight, nine for kids. Kids and shirts and pants. Yeah. Kids and Can you shirts text it to them? Texting to Chachi? Yeah. Oh, Chachi's Why don't you have Chachi's number? He lives in public. I want to talk to Chachi. Size <laughs> eight? No, seven, eight, and nine. <laughs> right? You text me. Don't you have my number? <laughs> Is it on the site? <sighs> what, my phone number? No. Mm. Oh, yeah, it's on Facebook. It's, it's on, on the Facebook. It's uh, under the... That thing, that, we, that thing that we were posted, that giant paragraph thing? Yes, Deep it's under there. It's under that. Couch. It should be. If you go to RWA's Facebook or Open Group, it should be right there. Wrestling Mayhem. All right. Shooting um, robots. It's also on the website. This, uh, through, who wants to do? Riz? Hey, remember, Riz. remember that time I ate pie with a frog fork? <laughs> Are you doing <laughs> that right now? Fork. Hell yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what kind of pie is All it? right. Uh, do we want? Is this our only remember when? Or are we gonna just remember when on Shima in general? This is mm, awesome. Let's do it. I have no idea what okay. you guys want to do. All right, ready? Riz, just just follow my lead and think of something. You doing it? I'm doing it. I'm doing it. Mm. <laughs> 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 I'm trying to get serious. All of a sudden, I hurt my ears. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> Pie! <laughs> 3.14 that bitch. Oh. All right. Um. <laughs> I think. <laughs> Why don't you fucking film that and put it on gold? And here we are. Chachi eating pie, making sounds like he's eating pussy. It's brown pie. <laughs> Oh my! Uh, Eating oh butthole. My. What? What? <laughs> I got cherry pie. I did not equate that to butthole. That's what I'm here for. <laughs> All right, right. Mm -mm. <laughs> 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 
<laughs> Wait, hold on. Time out. Time out. Time I'm out. trying to start the show, so we're not here all night. I know. What? There, there needs to be an entire part of gold that's just entitled pirated related noises. <laughs> I'm sorry. Pie oh. related noises. That's going in the description. Holy shit. That's. <laughs> Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay, right? Ready? Stop moving my camera! You have to, Chachi, you have to stick one finger in the pie while you're eating it. I moved the microphone away that way you would Yeah, it. but you're gonna move it back and bump my camera in the middle of the show now. Oh, come on. <laughs> Rearrange this. I, I got, I know. I know. What am I going to do? I don't know. What am I going to do with that? I'm sick of bumping your mic. You're my CTO, bitch. <laughs> Not a metaphor. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Wrestling Mayhem Show. Thanks, Logan Schuler, for that great interview. And uh, that was a clip you saw right there of uh, Prime Wrestling's Resolution 5 up there in Cleveland, Ohio. It's coming up August 18th. Uh, go check out more information at primewrestling.com. I'll be up there. And hopefully I can drag some of the Mayhem guys along with me. Um, <clears throat> hints. And uh, but yeah, since we're talking about Tashilo, and of course, big weekend the, this weekend. Uh, you know, of course, Shima Zion winning the X Division belt, really making it there in TNA after a year in there. Uh, Austin Aries stepping it up. Another guy we've seen in IWC here locally. Seen a lot of indies over the years. Seen him make it with the freaking world belt. Never thought I'd see that with Austin Aries. But I thought we do remember went on. Shima, since we were talking to him. Actually, it was completely LB's idea. Actually, it was Riz's idea. It's my idea. Actually, it was Riz's idea. Everybody gets credit. Thank you. Except Riz. <laughs> I've got pie. Yeah, yeah, Chachi has pie. And you can see more pie footage on gold. Uh, but Riz, meantime, what do you remember about Shima Zion? Wait, are we doing this now? Yes. Oh, yes. yes. Um, <laughs> Where the well, fuck have you been? I thought Sorg said he was going to do it, but okay, I'll do it. What the hell? Uh, Sorg, you by the way, it. Now by the way, your idea. We tossed it to you. By the way, remember when? Uh -huh. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> All right, but this mm. one is a visual. Remember when? I remember my first few year, like a year or so, of watching the Wrestling Mayhem show. And this one memory stuck out to me like a sore thumb. Um, it, it was in the Mayhem Studios. I was just watching it on, I think we were on the other, another site. Yeah, it was, it was, this is a blog TV clip. This was like. blog TV post. So, this is when we're but, like doing partial video sometimes. Yeah. But this video got through for some reason. And it just shows you the awesomeness that is Shima Ion or Shima Zion slash Zima Ion. And this one, it's, a, it, it's pretty cool. Take a, take a, take a look. So, yeah, well, we don't have audio on this, unfortunately, oh. but, uh, here, here we are. These guys, uh, facade, uh, Shima and, and I think the Marco all showed up late at night. Uh, well, I, right as we were ending a show. So we just kind of had an impromptu thing. And for some reason we decided, uh, we were told Shima does a wonderful Batista impression. He had just shaved his head. And there he is, doing Batista in the studio. Slash, yes, we're in the basement. Um, so there you go. Future X Division of TNA doing the baby Batista. Mere feet from where we'll, I stand now. We always used to make the joke that um, Shima was Batista's son. Yes. Mm-hmm. Yes, well, both, it's just both natural progression. From both that. with lineage from the Philippines, so it made it made sense, right? Mm -hmm. So, hmm. so there you go. The old couch, the old couch, which I'm I'm hoping has been burnt since. But uh, <laughs> there you go, there you go. Just, you know, you know the kind of guests we've had on here. What? Who knows what's what's been stained on that couch? So, guys, so. I showed my what I remembered. What do you remember about Shima Ion slash <laughs> Sion slash Zima Ion slash whatever? LB? I remember Team Catfish. Yeah! Uh, when I was first introduced to Shima Zion, he was teaming with Jason Gorey, and they were part of a tag team called Team Catfish, and they were spec-fucking-tacular. Yes, uh, they were. Exciting wrestling. 
jumping and flipping and team catfish because cat excuse me cats and fishes are like polar opposites and shima and gory were like polar opposites but if they could get along they're the most amazing creature and delicious on the planet absolutely amazing that's what i remember sorg um that was kind of mine too thanks thanks buddy thanks buddy actually the first time i saw him uh was on tv it was before i started going to uh iwc and they still had a television program on uh, WBGN, I think are the letters. And uh, and it was and it was when he first had the hairspray, and the hairspray kind of went away for a little bit. Uh, but he was more kind of dirty punk rocker then, I think, uh, going on. And and Matt, Chris Maverick, also been on the show a couple of times, a couple of our shows. He's been on Awesome Cast as well, I believe. Uh, was his manager, and I think he was taking on. I, it had to have been a super indie tournament because I remember John McChesney being all over uh, those few weeks of television. I was happened to watch. And uh, I think he was taking on low key, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, it was some tremendous stuff, and it was like, what is this guy doing? It was it was, so, it was something different, you know, something that he hadn't seen uh, before. And and the interesting things he's done with his hair since even uh, have been even more amazing. Uh, Wheels, what about you? Well, just like you, thanks, LB. That was one of my favorite moments, also. <laughs> Uh, but honestly, yeah, like, it's, it's a challenge it was, now. It was the whole team catfish thing with him, Gory, and also Maverick was with them. And the battles between Shima and Gory of Gory telling Shima get rid of Maverick, we don't need him, blah blah blah. And it was just it was the development from team catfish to team uh. Babyface fire, and it exploded to that, and the fans loved it. Definitely, and that's my remember window. And I don't know, Shima Zima Ion Chachi. Do you have a remember one on Shima? I really don't. You, 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 like, you, I only saw him a couple times with uh, Babyface fire. That yeah, and I don't think it. he's he's worked much since you started working with us in no. IWC. So, no, he did one match. Um, he did that tag match like in January, I think. Yeah, messing with uh, Ricky Shane Page. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, that was about it. Okay. Well, no, I I mean I can elaborate, but I I don't really have any remember when moments. Of no, it. no. But the current stuff that they have going on between uh, him and Ricky are just amazing. Mm-hmm. Like mm-hmm. Uh, Ricky's character has developed to the point where if he's in a bad mood that day. Then he he constantly wants to kick the shit out of Zima, hmm. like that's what he wants to do. And if he's a good in a good mood that day, then he just wants to like be friends with him and give him a hug. And he he likes he likes Zima as a wrestler. And, and I know like Shima hasn't been there since January, but Ricky Shane Page is still carrying that Shima whatever is happening there he is. this whole time. He just like loses his match and starts screaming about Shima. Yeah, and it just uh, it, it's it's interesting. It's interesting. So. Um, Excellent, excellent. And with that, I think we got everybody right. Anybody from the chat room? Nope, nobody. Um, well, I mean, they're there, but nobody. No one's commenting. Well, I don't yeah. think they. Where's they, our fan of the week? You guys are local. Fuck? Yeah, where is that fan of the week that what you the guys fuck? put over yeah, fan to pow! last week? Mexican. The motherfucking mayhem show. Wow. Um, <laughs> I can't see the chat room because it broke on this. It side. broke again. Yeah. It's just right. so intense. I have hiccups. Wow. Uh, you're, you're drunk. Hey, lunchbox. Well, I might be drunk. Hey, lunchbox. Yes, Chachi. Motherfucking mayhem show. <laughs> <laughs> I scared him out of him. <laughs> All that energy might work. So let's toss it to uh, Mike's Minute of Mayhem here on the Mayhem Show. The Mad One's Minute of Magical Mayhem Mysteries. <laughs> Greetings, Mayhem fans. It's Mad Mike here once again with the OG Minute of Mayhem. Now, last week I was a little flustered. Um, as you can see, I've been tearing my hair out. DJ Lunchbox, he played Monkey Rodeo for you people. I can't compete with that, but um, I have uh, Sergeant Slaughter riding Scotty Toddy's worm. No, no, that doesn't sound right. Um, how about how about how about this? I got I got Hulk Hogan riding Spider Man because everybody gets one. No. Fuck. All right. Um, I don't know. I don't know what I can do to beat Monkey Rodeo, but what I can do is um, tell you guys Raw sucked. Something powerful. And it's a shame because Money in the Bank's usually really good, and this Raw led it, leading up to it kind of sucked. 
Um, Impact. Awesome. Again, so awesome. In fact, I bought Destination X. I haven't watched it yet, but I bought it. I'm going to watch it probably tomorrow night. I'm going to do a review on it. And God help me. It's like TNA is actually listening to me, which is weird because I usually tell them really good things to do. Um, but yeah, I, I'm sorry. I can't promise monkey rodeos. I, I, but what I can promise is a new segment on the minute of mayhem. Um, Mad Mike's odd stat of the week, thanks to our friends at WrestlingData.com. And this week's odd stat is about the Brothers of Destruction. Uh, it's kind of ironic. I was just going to do initially who's won the most matches on WWE pay-per-views. But then I'm like, eh, fuck it, I'll be a pessimist, and I want to see who lost the most matches. And it turns out, Kane and The Undertaker. The Undertaker has won 94 WWE pay-per-view matches. Can he get to 100? I don't know. I don't know if he has six more matches in him. Uh, but Kane has lost 80 matches on WWE pay-per-view. Just think about that for a second. Kane has lost 80 fucking matches. Poor big red bastard. Well, uh, that's it for me this week. You're going to have two TNA articles coming this week. I don't know who this person is I'm turning into, but uh, God help me. All right, well, this is Mad Mike for the Minute of Mayhem. Peace, bitches. Thanks, Magic Mike, and we look forward to next week's... Uh uh, no, we don't. <laughs> <laughs> so, wow! There's no monkey rodeo. Wow! I don't care. <laughs> that, that's that's the level right there. Monkey rodeo or bust with Chachi. Right. So, obviously, uh, LB stepping it up last week. Hey, I can't uh, help I can it. Stop that. I, I, I saw <laughs> it in person, and it was just as amazing. I, I bet. I bet a man and his monkey. I took off wrestling for that. You did. You did. Yes, you did. You said I'm not going to work. I said until... I'm not working until I see monkeys ride a horse, a dog. Horse. And you were happy, weren't you? I was. In fact, now I want to see monkeys ride a dog. Or Bob, a horse. You too? Bobby, Bobby's going to suggest was going to suggest that the lunchbox continues with the minute of mayhem and stays on the show. I, I can. Oh God, that's like eight hours I of my week. That. <laughs> I second that. I want more monkeys rodeo. I'll see what I can do. Maybe I can do a video on Tuesdays instead of an article for the website. Maybe. maybe. Can we steal a monkey and just go around town <laughs> making it ride dogs? There's, there's some around Pittsburgh somewhere, man. I mean, seriously. No, so. do it. No, Chachi, that might be a bad idea because you don't know if one of those dogs won't just turn around and eat the monkey. Well, you don't know if the monkey won't eat the dog's face off. It's a, it's, a, it's a mystery. You don't know what's going to happen. <laughs> Chachi, do not give your monkeys bath salts. Well, no, but <laughs> uh, pet monkeys are known to bite people's faces off without drugs. That's this true. is true. For the record, I am going to the zoo this weekend, so uh, maybe I can come home with a Mayhem Show present. That is not as easy as you think, sir. Monkey food? <laughs> <laughs> Wait a minute. How do you know this, Chachi? Oh, dude. I go to the Smell. zoo all the time. We have a membership. I, Ice. I, I, uh, I know for a fact that it's not easy to get into the monkey enclosure. <laughs> Just throwing it out there. <laughs> yeah, when there's, right, when there's there nothing else because of the smell. Right. I, it, it is it is it's well, difficult. In other impossible news, uh, this TNA stuff has really been interesting. Since, Lies. Since uh, no, seriously. Okay. Since Mad Mike bought a pay per view, they wouldn't see for three days. <laughs> is he staying away from the internet as a whole to find out what right. didn't happen? I mean, that's that's insane. Uh, yeah. But it, it's really turning it around. And I, I saw Impact last week. I saw uh, the pay per view uh, finally, and. Uh, yeah, it was pretty damn good. It this was like, and again, the Destination X. They're going to be one and done, and we're just going to forget about next month, maybe. But they're setting up for some stuff. They're setting up for Shima uh, uh, versus Swanson when he comes back to to play off that. They have guys in there now, like Kenny Kane that came over from ROH right off the bat in Destination X. Hopefully, Sanjay Dutt uh, sticks around since they don't have Saban. Um, great to see some new faces. Hopefully, even like you know, Flip Casanova and some of those other guys stick around. Uh, it's the new faces. That's why we liked watching TNA to begin with, and it really it feels like it's back. I feel like we said it last year at this time, and we're uh, highly disappointed in the following months. And hopefully, that doesn't happen again. 
I'll be your Actually, thoughts. I think you're correct. All right, Hot Wheels, what are your thoughts? <laughs> oh, honestly, I think you're correct. I mean, I think last year, this time after Destination X, we did say this. That it was a good pay-per-view because Keep it, up. it was the X Division stars that showed us why we loved TNA. And <laughs> it's it's a shame, but honestly, you have Austin Aries is the heavyweight champion, Zima Ion, X Division champion, uh... Daniels and Kazarian are still the tag champions, which those are X Division type guys. Yeah, yeah, it's really kind of setting up. I mean, you don't have a lot of that dead weight as long as you keep keep away from like Sting trying to get the title or something like that. It's working out pretty good. And even, and, and I'm sorry, I know we've been like, you know, why is Jeff Hardy being pushed? Why, why Kennedy? Why, why Rob Van Dam? Listen to the crowd, the live crowd. Maybe it was different because they did just one live show on a Thursday night live on TV, so there's a different energy. But those people were like John Cena-ing for uh, Jeff Hardy. That's why he's there despite his problems. And he hasn't fucked up since and everything. So, you know, good for him. You know, good for TNA for keep him, sticking with him. And and I'm sure they're selling a lot of those diabolical armbands. Good for them. And, it's, <laughs> and it hasn't been bad matches. Him and Kennedy are not a bad match, you know. They're great WWE guys that could go. When we were excited about when Jeff Hardy was with the belt, because a little bunch of crazy stuff happened. He's still around. You know? Um, they're just going to always have that spot in the card. And it's a lot better than back in the day when we had, like, randomly DDP and Scott Hall and Kevin Nash that couldn't do anything. So, really, we're still better off with these guys. If that's going to be our dead weight, quote-unquote. You know? And I do give TNA a lot of credit this, this past week. Uh, even though they did have a good show. But the fact is, they didn't have Hogan. They didn't have Bischoff. They didn't have any Bischoffs. They didn't have uh, <laughs> Abyss or Bully. Was Bully Ray on the show? Yeah, Bully Ray was yeah, Bully on, on the show. That's right. No, he was on the no, he wasn't. No, he wasn't. No, he wasn't. He's oh, gonna no. he's no, gonna do the wasn't. match with Parks no, no, this week. Yeah, he's not. But he there was it was all focused on the younger guys. Wait, and even in the case they, re- they revisited stuff like like uh, the the Kurt Angle versus Samoa Joe match was a revisit of an old old thing. Like the back in the day thing, but it, I I I'd take uh, Angle versus Joe any day of the week. Yeah, that, really. They what still went. They were going great... at it like hard, like they did the first time. Exactly, it was great. I mean, it's like watching a good AJ Daniels match. They still know how to keep that crowd in it. Yeah, yeah, and and I like that. This is like becoming a yearly thing. We have AJ and Daniels go at it, and they step up every week, every year, and that's sure. If that's going to be like Destination X, Destination X is going to be our WrestleMania for TNA at this point because that's the kind of stuff we look forward to more than the other shows. And, and uh, it, 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 it's it's a it's a gimmick pay per view done right, and I love the new what they're doing with the title. They've really turned Destination X into Super Indie that we know locally. And to go yeah. back to your uh, point about Sanjay Dutt, uh, I did find out that he did yes sprayed his shoulder during the. The Ultimate X match. Yeah, yeah. Wasn't I? I was in the hangout with you, Riz, when I said yeah. that. I was like, it looked like it popped out of place. Yeah, it it, it looked bad. And yeah, it was it? It looked like he was hurt during the earlier match. I thought, and I wonder because I heard about him getting hurt. Um, but he was he was holding it pretty bad there too. So I don't know. It maybe maybe that was just a work, but um, but no, it, up and down. It was great because you had all the X Division uh, the qualifiers like early in the show. Uh, great. The second chance thing was great. Uh, then they, you know, they ran right into like you know Joe Angle and the uh, Daniels AJ, and then right into Destination X. There wasn't really a low point in that card, so it was definitely worth I've been, it. I've been predicting absolute death for TNA for years. Everybody I mean, you has. can go back and listen to Mayhem shows, especially the New Year's episodes, mm-hmm. and I'm like, okay, two years and TNA's dead, or you know, six months TNA's dead, and I couldn't be happier to be wrong. Yeah, yeah. And especially this. I mean, this is a place for indie guys that would get lost in the shuffle with WWE or after a year of FCW and get their name changed. Although that's kind of happening here, too, um, with the name changes. Uh, but it, it's great to see. Like, it seems like there's a lower barrier of entry for indie guys to get a chance and get on t- get their face on TV here. And I think that's like that's like TNA is providing a service to the indies that others aren't. I don't know. I mean, kind of what I mentioned earlier in that interview with Shulo, it seems like both companies are almost starting to focus on a indie 
feel than slowly trying to transition some of the bigger guys in the background. Oh, it's one of those. Then where's where's all the rest of the talent coming? I, I think I think you're finding WWE is having their homegrown talent not working out. So you're seeing them draw a little bit more from the Indies because you can't. You know, the cream's going to rise to the top, and they're going to get there eventually. And I think we're seeing that where more of the indie guys are the guys that are going to step up next. Because you're having less of the guys that step up from football that are the Jack guys. Because really, did the Jack guys really last too well on the indies at this point? Because mm. any of the ones that I can think of locally are not very good. And some of yeah. them, some of them have been in WWE for a minute and didn't work mm. out, or or uh, or anything like that. Um, it, it, what what group are you going to that you see a big jack guy that you would expect to be on WWE at this point? I can't think of any of them. I think that just that pool of jacked up dudes is gone, and they have no choice but to look at the talent that we've been watching for all these years. And Bobby did bring up a good point. Uh, the the only downside to uh, the train's yeah, coming. Yeah, there's a train coming through. I don't know where, but right. anyways, Bobby Bobby is saying that Directv is or Spike or TNA is actually trying to save Spike TV from getting canned by Directv. Well, I, I want to say this is not uh, and this is not just Spike TV. Yeah, um, they're, they're they're cutting like. A lot of programming. I think AMC it's Viacom. is one of them. Well, they, well, no, Dish Network yeah, has a thing with AMC. I, I AMC. The AMC is with uh, Dish Network uh, okay. that they're having those issues. This is actually an issue between DirecTV and Viacom, and uh, which of course includes. I mean, that includes like MTV at this point, you know. Uh, mm -hmm. But yeah, it's like the you know, Hulkamaniacs call DirecTV now, so you uh, don't lose your Spike TV. This is one of those things. It always happens. Fox has been notorious for this with cable companies for years. They want more money. There's a disagreement with a contract dispute. You'll probably lose it for a week and everything will be fine. Or, and we didn't mention this on Awesome Cast, or you'll be like Dish Network, and if you're mad about losing AMC, they'll give you a Roku box. So you can get your programs off of Amazon. Uh, so, however that makes sense. Um, but that's one of those we didn't get to on Awesome Cast this time. Um, also, although this may be a, a uh, this is this is usually where it turns bad because we get a good Destination X, and then we get something called Hardcore Justice, which I believe last year didn't have a single hardcore match. Eh, so, nope. <laughs> which was the first mistake. It sounds like porn, and it sounds like porn. Hardcore justice. Well, it was hard justice beforehand, pow, and it was like justice. That wasn't much better. Pow, it's pow, pow. Better so, so for we'll you see. audio listeners, I'm thrusting my crotch while yeah, I'm pow. <laughs> and you funny. moved the mic. <laughs> I moved the mic. So. <laughs> it's that big. Pow. Nobody touched <laughs> that mic. Nobody. There's been chotch crotch on it. Um, crotch, crotch. But yeah, really, really good to see what's going on with TNA. And again, yeah. what's up? Something, something weird, so Sorry to. No, it, it's t TNA related and well, Impact Wrestling. Did anybody notice, like during Destination X, their turnbuckles were back to TNA turnbuckles? And they usually are, aren't they? Uh, they on the pay per views, it, it's TNA. It's red. It's TNA turnbuckles. And then when they're on the show, it's Impact. Like that's how they're 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 mixing the branding. It's a TNA well, pay per view, but it's yeah. Impact Wrestling the show. Because it's weird. Because I, I was sitting there having that conversation with somebody, and somebody even noticed that, like in a chat room I was in or something. And they're like, "What is? Is it TNA or is it Impact Wrestling?" I'm like, "Well, they just got the new belt, so they're not going to sit there and want to change a belt again. Just keep it TNA." Yeah, and they and they've been they, they it's 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 a we complain about this when they first started the impact thing because it was confusing, and it really still is, and I guess we've just kind of accepted it. Uh, but yeah, they, it, it, what are they? Are they Impact Wrestling or the TNA Wrestling? Both. dot coms go to the same site, so they're, they're, and their site even is emblazoned with Impact Wrestling all over the place. But like here i'll bring it up here you got impact wrestling all over the place but it says tna 10 years a total of total non-stop action it depends on where you're looking if you're looking at pay-per-view it's tna wrestling presents bound for glory if you look at anything impact wrestling the show it's straight up impact on on spike tv i don't think even they they mentioned tna uh anywhere really 
when, when they're mentioning it. So I don't know. I think it's a branding problem. I think it's a little confusing. It could be confusing to people that aren't, you know, in the no wrestling fans or anything like that. Uh, so, uh, but it seems to be working out for them so far, right? All right. The live thing seems to be working out for, for them so far. And hopefully that this turns into a regular thing and not just this summertime deal. So, well, they're going three hours from what I just saw. Is that, oh, that was serious? I thought you guys were kind of messing with me last night in the hangout after the WWE. No, they're thing. going three hours. The first hour will be a recap show. And then from nine to whenever is the live show. Oh, so I don't really need to tune in to, for three hours. Right. It's like, it's like that old re, uh, TNA reaction show. Exactly, except for it's backwards now. <laughs> no, that makes that makes more sense, really, because we wanted to hang out, you know, doze off to the post stuff and recap of what you just saw, right? So, I don't know. I was Ciro saying it was only a special night, though. Hmm. I I, I presume he's going. It's on their website, so I don't. Hey, know. guess what? What's up, Chuck? WWE is going to three hours in two weeks. Two weeks. Greatest and Charlie Sheen. ever. Uh, yeah, and it, it's a uh, yeah, great commercial. I, I was tweeting that this week. Um, we can't play it because they'll boot us off of YouTube. No, no, not them. It's uh, a TNA we have a problem with because oh, okay. they're Viacom. Oh. Not that they should really be worrying about that because they're not even going to be on Direct TV soon. <laughs> um, <laughs> Viacom. <laughs> right in the anus. Yeah, that's just them. They're just, they're just, they have their issues with uh, YouTube and. Right in the pinus. Yeah. Um, no, no, WWE doesn't care. They're, they, I think they, they, they understand what's going on with YouTube and that it, YouTube is a video jukebox of their stuff. And that's why all the stuff's free on their website right now. Which is amazing. So, which is awesome. It's, it's, it's a great thing. It just makes you, I and mean, we still buy the DVDs when they put them out. You know, I, you know, I, I, I don't mind, you know, getting the DVD or watching the DVD on Netflix for the old Clash of the Champions matches, you know, as opposed to the crappy VHS dub quality on uh, YouTube. You know, I mean, that, that, that's kind of nice, actually. So. Hey, so here's something that I, I, I started watching uh, Best of Raw, vs. Raw and SmackDown 2011 yeah. that they just put on Netflix. Yeah. <laughs> Do you guys remember what the first match of 2011 was on Raw? What? Take a guess. Wasn't Kevin Federline last year? No. No, seriously, take a guess. Mm, John Cena? No. CM Punk and Daniel Bryan. Uh-uh. It was uh, The Miz as champion, accompanied to the ring by Alex Riley, versus... Oh, shit. I'm blanking. <laughs> <laughs> you don't even know. Uh, Morrison. Michael Cole? Sorry, no, Morrison. John Morrison. Yeah, John Morrison in a Falls Count Anywhere match. Wow. For the belt. Wow. First match of 2012, or 11. Yeah, 2011. Nice. And now look at it. Where are, they, where are either one of them? <laughs> All I see the Miz on is the No Holds Barred commercial. Well, he's off filming a movie. It, it, yeah, he's actually he's doing Marine 3. Yeah. Uh, by the way, saw the reunion last night. Not bad. Not what? bad. Saw so what? The reunion with John Cena. Oh. Not bad. It was, it was one of the better of those weird, in, uh, I want to call them indie movies. It's on Netflix? Uh, it's the discs. I'm sure it'll be on Netflix shortly. Also saw the other I was going to say, it doesn't take long. No, it doesn't. They, they find their way eventually after Walmart has their exclusive contract, I'm sure. I'm just waiting for uh, No Holds Bar to go on their Netflix. Exactly, exactly. That'll be coming up. It has to be. So, um, so Money in the Bank is this weekend. Fuck Hornswoggle. <laughs> no! <laughs> Screw you! That was the greatest Screw payoff. You. That was Screw the greatest you. payoff you your ever. Fucking mouth. No, whoa, 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 whoa. let's break this down. Whoa, 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 whoa. Let's break, break this down. Let's break this down. He's a dumping ground for both loose storylines and semen. Hey, hey, <laughs> shut. Good point, Shachi. Counterpoint. Shut your whore mouth. That's not a counterpoint. <laughs> I'm not done yet. <laughs> <laughs> we here on the Wrestling Mayhem Show have stated for years that Hornswoggle's village is under the ring. Last night on Raw, they fucking proved it. And that village has internet. Yes. 
I don't give a fuck if Hornswoggle's village is under the ring. That's fine. That's great. Hornswoggle is a hilarious and whimsical tiny little character, but he's also a <laughs> dumping ground for loose fucking end and last ditch storylines. Remember when fucking uh, what was it Mr. Kennedy was supposed to be Vince McMahon's son? Oops, no, it's Hornswoggle. <laughs> <laughs> Let's take this huge storyline that we've been fucking with for well over a year, the anonymous raw general manager. Who's it going to be? <laughs> it's Hornswoggle. <laughs> <laughs> Done with it. But it Done. makes perfect fucking sense. No, it doesn't. Yes, it, it does. Why? Because the raw GM because was Shaji always watching. To argue with us. No, the raw GM was always watching. How? Shaji? Chachi, We're I better to watch from than bit. under the fucking ring. <laughs> we'll Chachi, I agree with you a little bit. Why? Because if you think about it, the Raw GM talked through the computer through Michael Cole. And Hornswoggle could not talk until last Christmas when Santa Foley gave him the voice. It's a good point from Ciro. I'm pretty sure Hornswoggle had some interaction with the GM before. So find all those clips where the GM was was giving matches and Hornswoggle was in the ring, and obviously that wasn't him. Hey! Hey! <laughs> First off, there is timers on emails. You can schedule emails to go out. Secondly, of course he had to interact with himself, or it would have been obvious that it was fucking or him. thirdly, it's a whole fucking village, so he's got brothers and sisters and a whole fucking letter under there to send the message instead. Exactly. All right. Listen, we here on the motherfucking guys, mayhem guys. show <laughs> know what's going I'm on. I'm screaming. I can't even hear <laughs> Go for it. I'm sorry. Listen, go ahead. You can, you can talk about it and make it make sense all you want, but it's not going to make it interesting. Which is punch, what punch I punch. feel is a huge missed opportunity in this uh, in this scenario. They could have done something interesting. Instead, they defaulted to Hornswoggle. Hey, you know what? <laughs> I do, actually, and I don't need to hear it again from the likes of you. I am perfectly... <laughs> Listen here, motherfucker. <laughs> Mr. Cock in a Box. <laughs> I am quite happy with the payoff for that storyline. Hey, hey, that's you know, excellent. Boss, I, do have I respectfully one... disagree with you because I'm gonna, popcorn I'm popcorn. gonna respectfully disagree with your face. <laughs> that's fine. It doesn't make any sense. <laughs> I do have one exception. Yes, for your lunchbox. Little people's court. Dun, dun. Thank you, Riz. I was thinking the same thing. You, you love little people's, little people's court. court. You can't sit there and say you didn't love. Little People's Court, because that is a lie. Oh. A bull face lie! Oh, I think you liar. That. Liar face. <laughs> wow. Your face is full of lie right now. So much anger. So much wait, anger. Wait, wait, wait. Sorry, LB, it's come on. on. You but mean, the, if you watch that on YouTube right so now, good. that Little People's Court wouldn't make you laugh hysterically. No! You have no sure. soul, sir. No. No, nope, fine. I have no soul, but no, I did not enjoy Little People's Court. All right. Well, on that note, you, I'm sir, I'm trying to keep. <laughs> you, sir, have a hatred for little people. Oh, I knew it was going to come around to this. I fucking love midgets. Why? Because you wouldn't midgets call them midgets. Has midgets in it, so don't question my don't question hey, my dedication don't to the shorter sex. Okay. What? <laughs> I don't think that's even accurate. I don't give a fuck if it's that shorter or sex. The shorter sex? <laughs> I. So is that just the ladies? It's a pun. I'm, it's a pun. I'm so you like about short ladies? As... Also, also, yeah, fuck Hornswoggle. Fuck what they used the character for. But whatever that fucking guy's name is who plays Hornswoggle, good for him. Aces. Thumbs up, my friend, because you are a working man's man, you're a company man, and you'll bust your ass when they ask you to do something in the ring. So, I forget his name. Something postal. It's horse but fucking good for you, man. You just got a bad rap from the writers. Hey! <laughs> they just saw short-sightedly. <laughs> Oh. <laughs> I saw what, what you did there. I saw it. He has some pretty tall shoes to fill. <laughs> he has no. some shortcomings. <laughs> 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 
<laughs> any more? Any more? Any more midget puns? Anybody? <laughs> going once? Going twice? You have been listening to the motherfucking mayhem show. It is time to learn what we learned in wrestling this week. Sorgatron, go! I learned we need to not do that segment and mention money, money in the bank first. <laughs> Are we done? Can we, can we talk about money in the bank since that's this weekend? No. Y- yeah, we probably should, sir. I thought, I thought you said you were wrapping it up. Yeah, but I was trying to get to... I'm trying to get to wrap it up by getting to the points. There's money in the bank this weekend. Do we want to say anything about it? No. It's going to be super good. Is it? It's going to be weird. <laughs> it's going to be weird? It's going to be weird? Okay, we, well, we got the money in the banks. Uh, uh, we might... Whoa. That was... Whoa. That was he, did you want to plug your mic? I had to. Okay, well, the give mic- me a warning so I can turn you down. The microphone was falling <laughs> off. What? Okay, fix it. <laughs> I am. All right, stop yelling at me. You're yelling Chucky's at me. Chucky's microphone was falling wow, off. Wow, he, he yelled so hard he broke his microphone. Was- All right, we got money in the bank this okay, weekend. Okay. We got two money in the banks. I can't even hear Chachi over myself and my headphones. I'm good. Um, I am good. I, obviously, <laughs> it's not going to be what we got out of it last year with the build up with C- Cena and uh, CM Punk. Um, I don't know. What do you think? Are you excited about the Money in Bank matches themselves? Uh, the or SmackDown you... one looks good. Okay. Yeah. I do give them credit on the yeah, SmackDown. Sorry, that's but the, the Raw one at being a four way ladder match is kind of. N- n- no. And already Cena's like the first guy that uh, it's kind of painting that he's probably going to win it. Yeah. So, yeah. Uh, of course, AJ being involved with the CM Punk Daniel Bryan oh, thing. So fucking adorable. <laughs> the he most is. adorable match ever. So, uh. <laughs> so of course, we're looking forward to that. Uh, Sorg. Yes. Sorg. Mm-hmm. I've been thinking a lot about this. <laughs> uh oh. Will you marry me, Sorg? Uh, <laughs> oh, it's getting weird. Oh, it's gone too far. <laughs> it's Chachi, Chachi, Chachi. Yeah. Now you, now you propose to me, and then lunchbox, uh, lunchbox. Hey, 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 lunchbox. Will you yes. marry me? I completely thought a lot about this. This had not, absolutely nothing to do with the fact that you just asked Sorg to marry you, and then told me to ask you. I like where this is going. <laughs> <laughs> hey, hey, Chachi. Yeah, Chachi. Yeah. Will you marry Hot Wheels? Fuck no! <laughs> <laughs> wow. It's not a race thing, I just don't like to be tied down. Oh, that's a lie. Uh, <laughs> no! <laughs> I... Uh. Wow, okay. Um... <laughs> Sorry, I just, hey, yes, Sorg. Bobby, everything. And that Sant- Santino makes a great sh- Sherlock Holmes. I learned... You know what would have been better? What? If bubbles would have come out of the pipe. Who wasn't <laughs> exactly. DJ Lunchbox. You wanted a monkey to come out of the pipes? Bubbles. I said that. Shut your mouth. I thought we were talking about the, <laughs> the clown. No, I'm talking the about monkey? bubbles. Like if it was Did a you? bubble pipe. Chachi, what did you learn from wrestling this week? I learned that... Pow! I wanted Bubbles to come out of the pipe, and that Hornswoggle being the anonymous Raw GM is the greatest payoff ever. Shut it, Lunchbox. (laughs) Sorg, what did you learn this week from wrestling? I learned that Little Petey Pump's coming to Cleveland, and people remember who he is. Hmm. Petey Bohm's going to be a resolution. Yes. What did you learn from wrestling this week? I posted in the chat, but I'm going to say it right now, that you can, on Fiverr, I learned that you can have someone cut a wrestling promo on video for $5. What? Nice. Hold on, hold on. I'm going to try to look this up here. Go ahead, Wheels. What did I learn from wrestling this week? I learned that indie wrestling is making it to the mainstream. Yeah, yeah. And being less hey. indie. That means we're all going to hate it. All right, and be, chat room. Be trending, right? Chat room, what'd you learn from yeah. wrestling this week? Uh, Zero learned that TNA had a better show than WWE for once. Oh, they've done that before, I'm sure. Wow, I will cut often. a pro wrestling promo on you on video for $5. Who wants to do this? Who is this person? Bulldog Bob Brown. I'll do it. Do it. That's your challenge for this do week? I, I'll pay five bucks to have him cut a promo. I'll do it, man. Do yeah. it. Do Bring it. it. I'll have it for do the it. show next week. Okay. 
Well, it depends on how fast the turnaround is. I would hope it's a pretty quick turnaround. Yeah. So it's a one day delivery. One day delivery. Sweet. I'll find out what do, what I have to do. I don't want to be involved in it. He has a uh, what? Well, I mean, like, I'll, I'll pay the money, I'll let him cut a promo on me. Okay. But, like, I'm not going to provide him anything to cut a promo Just, like, on. tell him your name and your Twitter and yeah. let him go from there, right? Right, pretty much. I mean, that seems to make sense. So, uh, did we I don't miss know anyone? why I wouldn't think of this, I'm sorry. Chat but room. I also learned that Bob Backlund can still go. Yeah, he's not, he's not bad for his age. I mean, wow. 62, would, right? Would you really call what he did last night going... Hey, he moved hey, around. He wrestled that as hard as he did quick. in the 90s. <laughs> there you go. There you go. Chicken wing. Chicken wing! Mm, yes. Chicken. Wing. Wing. What else did the chat room learn? Uh, 500 weeks. 500 weeks? Uh, 500, 500 weeks! Oh, gotcha. <laughs> Ah, <laughs> uh, that note, guys. Hey, we are you have been hey, listening hey, to the hey. motherfucking mayhem show. Hey, hey, hey! You can contact us. You can find out everything <laughs> you need to know about us at wrestlingmayhemshow.com. You can reach us on the twitters at mayhem show. We are on Facebook. Come talk to us. Join the conversation. We have fun times on the Facebooks. We are on the Google Pluses. We are on the iTunes. We are on your iPhones, your Androids. You can get us from the App Store, the Amazon App Store. Buy our app. Hear the gold stuff that you can't hear anywhere else. You Mike can also making pie noises. Right, pie noises, pie noises. Mm, pie, <laughs> pie. Okay, we tortured them long enough. Lunchbox, what did you learn from wrestling this week? <laughs> oh, <laughs> oh, oh! Did I learn something from wrestling this week? <laughs> oh goodness! What I tried tossing to him earlier. I know. I purposely cut for that horn swoggle ruins everything. You, sir, are a liar. I knew he was going to say that. That's why I purposely cut you off and went to the outro. <laughs> yes, Chachi. We figured out your motives. Okay. And uh, here on the Wrestling Mayhem what Show, time? we like to interact with our fans. So send us emails to... Good times. At WrestlingMayhemShow.com. You can call us on the Mayhem Hotline at... 412-206-WMS0! Yes. And we will listen and play your voicemails on the air if they make sense. And sometimes if they don't! They make sense. And sometimes if they don't. Depends. Yeah, drunk dial us if you won't. Make us laugh. Please. Please. Drunk dials are fun. Take your pants off. Mine are already off. So, for Chachi, chat room, Sorg, Lunchbox, Riz, Google Plus Wheels, Mayhem out!